all of my fins shaped and now we're going to install them and we're going to do this in three phases. So first I'm just going to use some gel type super glue to tack the fins in and attach them to the motor mount. Now this is just temporary. Um, super glue by itself is not enough to hold these in place. After we have all the fins tacked into place, then we'll have access here to the actual fin tabs from the inside and we're going to put internal fillets throughout this. And then, once those have cured, we'll put the traditional external fillets on as well. Right. So here I'm just going to take my super glue and we want an even bead all along the root edge here. It does not need to be very thick. This should go right into place there, just like that. Okay, so check it from above and then check along the length of the rocket. Okay, make sure that is straight perpendicular. Um, if you want to use a fin alignment guide, this tube is the same size as a BT-70. So if you've got a BT-70 fin alignment guide, you can go ahead and slip that on. Um, let this dry for about 5 to 10 minutes before going on to the next one. And then as you do, just do the same thing all the way around. Let the fins fully dry, probably about 30 minutes after that. And then we'll come back and do the internal fillets. The super glue on my fins has dried and they've come out nice and even. Um, if for some reason you get a fin that's not where you want it, you can go in and run some acetone down along that root edge joint. That'll soften the super glue and then you can just wiggle that loose, wait till the acetone evaporates and then try it again. Uh, you can also use 5 minute epoxy in place of the super glue, but it's going to take your fins longer to set up. Here I have some 15 minute epoxy made up. You could also use 30. Uh, but we do want the longer time here so that the epoxy can flow down along the fins. Now you're going to need a wooden applicator of some form. All right, and what I'm going to do here is initially just take some of the epoxy just run it down the inside there. Now right at the end of this we're also going to put the aft centering ring into place. So you don't have to worry about that excess epoxy there too much as long as you keep it on the inside. Okay, and I'm going to start using this. So that I can just run, whoop, run that all the way down there. Okay, so we need to spread the epoxy so it gets all the way down. Okay, and we have two joints that we're working on. The one that goes against the motor mount and the one inside the body tube. And again, the nice thing about the fiberglass is you can see your applicator as you're going along there. And you may want to have some rubbing alcohol, alcohol handy to clean up any messes that you have. So like I've got a little bit of epoxy there.
Okay, so if you got epoxy somewhere you don't want it, you can just use a little bit of rubbing alcohol to remove that. you're doing this it may seem like you're kind of just doing random blobs everywhere but since this has a longer working time what we're going to do when everything is done is we'll just stand this up on its forward end and all of this epoxy will run down fill in the gaps and eventually um, you'll have a layer of it on the middle ring which is going to give it a lot of strength In the end, if you were to look through this, and you kind of, sort of can, um, you'll see that it actually evens itself out rather well. centering ring so you can go ahead and just cut off that string there whatever you used All right so we should have a considerable amount of epoxy already on that motor mount but if if it's uneven, go ahead and spread a bead all the way around the motor mount and the inside of the body tube. Okay, and then also make sure that you've got some right at the end of the fin tabs there okay let's take our last retaining ring there or not a retaining ring, centering ring Push it all the way down until it's snug. Okay. And then now we're also going to put on the engine retainer. So for this, we're going to need a whole bunch of epoxy around the outside of our motor mount tube. Okay, and ours had a little bit of a gap to it, so we do want this to be a fairly heavy coating. And at the same, same time here, um, we'll go ahead <coughs> excuse me, and spread some more along the inside, come on, on the inside of the body tube to make a fillet for that aft ring. All right, and we're reaching our working time on here. Epoxy's just starting to set up. Okay. Set that up for just a moment. Alright, now I'm going to take my retaining ring, make sure the threads are facing aft. And I'm just going to place that right in there. And then make sure it is centered. OK, 
Okay, and then once more we're going to clean up any stray epoxy. So all around the outside of the body tube. We should not have anything on the outside. Alright, and there's like epoxy fingerprints up here. Okay, and now I'm going to let this cure in an upright, upside down position, and then uh, we'll come back to do the outer fillets. The internal fillets are cured, as is the uh, epoxy around the aft centering ring. And now we're going to mask off the body tube and the fins in preparation for the external fillets. And the first thing I'm going to do here is simply wrap some masking tape around the motor retainer so that we don't accidentally get some epoxy on it. And then I'm going to mask the body tube here so that um, we leave a space of about five millimeters or just under a quarter of an inch for the fillet itself. And you want to get that down as tight as you can to help prevent the epoxy from getting under the tape. This has deceptively long fins. All right, so we're going to also put some down here. Okay, and I continue this all the way around the rocket. And now we're going to do the same thing up on the fins. And I'm going to leave a little bit of extra on each end where I'll be able to peel it back off easier. Okay, but the same way here, we want to get that edge nice and tight. Now everything is masked. <clears throat> and we'll need to make up a batch of either 15 minute or 30 minute epoxy to do the fins here. Uh, you can use 5 minute, but plan on doing a separate batch for each fin uh, because it won't stay in working condition long enough to do all three. I have my 15 minute epoxy made up. Um, for this, you'll also want to have good tight gloves on here because you're going to use your fingers to help mold the epoxy in. You're also going to need some rubbing alcohol, and I recommend setting a timer. So, this is 15 minute epoxy. I want to have all of this done by 10 minutes, and then I'll remove the tape at that time, and then we can kind of smooth things in um, and get some nice, even hopefully smoothly transitioning fillets there. All right, so I'm going to start my timer. Okay, 
Okay, and then we're just going to take some epoxy here. Just run that along the seam with the body tube. A bit more there. All right, now I'm going to do the opposite side of the same fin. Okay, now I'm going to take my finger, moisten it with alcohol, okay, and then I'm going to use the, the alcohol wetted finger here to smooth that in. And the alcohol just prevents the um, epoxy from sticking and hanging onto your finger so much. Now if you want thicker fillets, it's best to do this first to get a, a good basic fillet. And then after the epoxy cures, you can add more to it, um, either using the same epoxy or using, say, an epoxy paste or an epoxy clay. Um, that's going to be easier for building things up rather than for strength. So this initial... Um, fillets here are mainly for strength. And then if you want to build them up so you get a really nice transition between the fins and the body tube for greater aerodynamics, do that after these ones are finished. got about two minutes left and then I will peel up the masking tape there and we can also do some final touch-ups. Okay now it's time to start removing tape. Have your alcohol ready along with some paper towels or rags and such because this will be messy. Okay so we kind of peel this back on itself.
once more go ahead and get some tissues with some alcohol right, and look for stray stuff that should not be there and you see for the most part we've got nice clean fillet lines and that's what we want Some of that looks like adhesive from the tape. We can do that later. Okay, so I am going to let this finish curing in a horizontal position, and then we'll come back. While we're waiting for the fin fillets to dry, we can go ahead and install the switch band onto the main coupler here. And the first thing we need to do is find the center of this is going to be three inches okay and our switch band is one inch and so what I'm going to do is mark half an inch on either side of this so one there and one there Okay, so our switch band should go right between those two. And then I'm going to go ahead and roughen up this area a little bit. Alright, now this doesn't have a lot of stress put upon it, but it'll help it hold nonetheless. And I'm trying to keep the scratch marks away from the area that will be exposed underneath the switch band. We'll see how close I get here. And now I'm going to go, oh, let's see, let's go ahead and roughen up the inside of the switch band as well. All right, I'm going to make up some five minute epoxy and I'll be right back. I made up a small amount of epoxy here and what I'm going to do is go ahead and slide the switch band up to that first half inch mark there. And it'll just give me a guide for applying this. And then I'm just going to smear this around the circumference. It's actually going down by gravity here. I need to find my marks. So I've got enough on there. I'm just going to twist this into position. So I'm just going to keep turning it as I go. Alright, and it's going to drip here. So make sure you've got something underneath that can catch it. Okay, and I don't want any type of a fillet there because that will interfere with the proper mating with the two body tubes. So I'm going to go ahead and remove any of the excess epoxy there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and let that cure off to the side. The epoxy on the switch band is about ready to go and so we can start looking at the bulkheads that will attach to that. I've drilled these out so that the center one accepts a 3 16 or number 10 eye bolt and then the two outer ones will accept a number 8 threaded rod. And so the eye bolts are going to go in just like we did before with the nose cone so we'll have a sandwich here of a nut and a washer that will be on the outside and then a washer and a nut on the inside. Did I get the right nut? 
Now when I get this ready for final assembly, I'll tighten these down with a wrench and put thread lock on them. But for now I just wanted to make sure everything fits. Okay, and then we'll just designate one of these as being forward and the other one aft. And I am going to try and orient it so that the eye bolt is perpendicular to the two holes here. And that will give us most, more clearance. Okay, so on our eye bolts here, or actually not the eye bolts, the threaded rod, I'm going to start out with um, a washer and a nut. There we go. And start out with just a couple of millimeters of clearance there. And then I'm going to run that down into the hole. Okay, I'm going to have to take these back to the drill for just a moment, and I'll be right back. All right, I've widened the holes ever so slightly. Now we'll try this again. Okay, so that's going to go like that. And then we'll do the same thing here. Where we'll take another nut and washer. Okay, and we'll run those down through here. All right, now I cut these threaded rods at th uh, 17 centimeters, uh, which is just a little bit over six and a half inches. And it's better to cut them a little bit long than have them be too short. And so if, when we get done with this, if they're too long for aesthetic or uh, reasons or if they're just in the way, we can cut them shorter. All right, now I'm going to take the coupler here and we're going to drop those down through. And the other thing I did on the coupler was I treated it with super glue on the edges just like we did the body tubes. Alright, so now we're going to put those threaded rods, and this is the worst part of the whole thing, is trying to get these lined up. That up there, and that one up there. Okay, and then we need to twist this so that they're in the, we don't want them twisted inside. Fortunately, again, since you can see through the fiberglass at this point, you can see if they are twisted or slanted there. All right, and now we're going to put on a lock washer and a nut. Now, right now I'm just using regular hex nuts. Um, once I get this finished and ready to go, I will probably replace these with wing nuts just to make it easier to open in the field. I just didn't have any in my shop today. Okay, so right now I'm just doing these finger tight. But when we're actually ready to launch this, um, we will have everything tightened down. Um, put thread lock on these ones because these really don't need to move again unless you need to readjust the um, threaded rod there. Those two should just stay in that position always. Okay, but these two, as I said, wing nuts are probably going to work better here so you can get it in and out easily. Now, if you're sure that you're never going to carry a payload in this and you're never going to use um, dual ejection, then you can actually leave these bulkheads off, you can even leave the switch band off and just glue this between the two body tubes with epoxy and then run your shock cord all the way up to the nose cone and it's just at that point a giant sport rocket. Okay. But I like to leave myself the option because it doesn't hurt anything if I have this in here and if I do want to run it as a sport rocket I can just take this off. Now I am in just a moment here, I'm going to drill this area for um, rivets just like we did with the nose cone up here. And again, that will give me the option um, of either just leaving this in place or if I need to completely disassemble my avionics bay here, I can. Okay. Um, and 
and I say, if, if you want to leave the bulkheads off um, and just have this pass through all the way up to the top, you can even do that without um, epoxying it. You just have to run another set of rivets on the bottom side of this and have them go through the main body tube. So the rivets actually give you a lot more options than just gluing it in one particular configuration. Now just like I did on the nose cone, I'm going to mark equidistant points around the body tube here. So I'm going to start with a 6.1 and then a 12.2 And then back over here, our 18.3. Okay, now I'm going to draw lines up here just like we did before, but those don't know, need to go any further than about six centimeters. So I'm just going to keep that in mind. against our tube, All right, I think five centimeters is going to be a good place to go, right about there, because that will give it enough space up here um, to keep the strength of the tube, but it won't be so far down in here that it might be interfering with our avionics. So now I'm going to mark these lines. This is forward. In fact, I'm going to mark on this. So that's forward, and this one is aft. So now I can slide that in. Okay, and the other thing I'm going to look for here, and I don't know if you can see it in the video, but I can just see through the fiberglass where the nuts are. So I just want to make sure that I don't have a line exactly where I've got a nut, like there. Okay, so I'm going to come, that, come over a little bit. Because I don't want to be hitting that threaded rod. I probably wouldn't anyway. All right, and so here I'm just going to tack that into place temporarily with some masking tape. And I'm going to take this over to the drill and drill some 13 64 holes in this. So here I have my holes drilled. And you can see I'm going to need to use the super glue to tack down the fibers again. These are the same ones I used on the nose cone. These are 5 by 6.5 millimeter. And we'll just stick those in without locking them just to make sure everything is where it should be. So those all fit. Uh, I'm going to go off camera here and seal these with the super glue like I did on the nose cone. The finished rocket is going to be right at about five feet tall, which using the three to one rule for length of rocket versus or length of shot cord versus rocket for long skinny rockets, that gives us a 15 foot shot cord. And I've added an extra foot for good measure and for taking up space for knots and such. So I've got two 16 foot, 1,000 pound test Kevlar shock cords. And these are going to be attached to the eye bolts on either end of the uh, bulkheads here. And then one will be attached to the heavy shock cord that we put in the body tube. And the other will be attached to the nose cone eye bolt in the upper part of the rocket. 
So the first thing I'm going to do here is tie a loop into each end of these. Okay, and then I'm going to take some super glue here and I'm going to use it to prevent fraying. So I'm going to get right down below the frayed area there and just let that soak in. Okay, and then I'm also just going to put a little dab here on the knot itself to keep it from unraveling. Because the Kevlar is actually pretty smooth and it doesn't like to hold knots well. And you can just take a tissue here and wipe off the excess. Okay, and just let those dry. And we'll do the same thing over here with the other shock cord. Now here I have the end of the shock cord from the main body tube, which is just off camera. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put a big loop in this. Okay, and I will, once again, just put a little dab of super glue to lock that knot in place. Okay, and so now when we're ready to put this whole thing together, okay, we can um, attach the shock cord for the main body tube to our base shock cord here. Um, and what you can do is slip this like this and then run the entire length of that shock cord through. Okay, and then we're just going to pull these two together. So those aren't going to go anywhere. Even if this knot slips up, it can't go anywhere else. So that's good there. All right, and then up on this end, we are going to need a quick link. Okay, now we don't need a really big quick link, although you may need one a little bit bigger. Yep, so this is an eighth inch quick link and it doesn't open up quite enough to allow this over our 3 16 inch uh, eye bolt there. So you've got a couple of options. You can either trade out your eye bolts for number 8 rather than uh, 3 16 or you get a little bit bigger quick link like this one. Okay. And then you can also hook in your parachute here. We'll talk about parachutes in just a minute. Okay, or if you prefer to have a little bit of slack line so this can hang down, you can tie another loop in the Kevlar here and then tie in the parachute to that using another quick link. Okay, now you don't have to use Kevlar. If you prefer to use tubular nylon, you can do it in exactly the same way. Um, just put a loop in each end of the nylon, either tying it or sewing it, and it will go into this in just the exact same way. Uh, if you want, you can also tie these two together using another quick link. Uh, but the more steel you've got in there, the heavier it's going to get. Okay, so we need one there. Um, up here on the other end, now you'll have to keep in mind that we need to get all the body tubes in place too. Right, so down here on the eye bolt, so this will be at the bottom of the payload section. All right, here we can just pass our entire shock cord through the loop. Okay, but that'll give us a nice strong anchor right there. Just pass it through like that. Okay, and then the 
upper part of the shock cord here. Let me get it all untangled. Okay, this will then go through the upper body tube. Make sure you put it in the, the aft section here where your holes will be in the wrong places. All right, then that will hook on here and then you'll need another quick link over here right, and that'll hook on there and the shock cord there and similarly um, for your main parachute if you're doing this dual deployment you can either hook it on to the quick link or you can hook it on to a loop in your shock cord. And again, just like with the um, main body tube shock cord, you can use tubular nylon, you could use a heavier Kevlar if you, you really want over redundancy there. Okay, but that's how all the things tie together. Structurally, the upper part of our rocket is finished. So from the nose cone down through the payload section to the avionics bay and coupler, this is all done, and the only thing left to do is paint it. I'm going to set it aside for now. All right, and then come back to our main body here. Uh, at this point, I can go ahead and remove the tape. I'll probably put some more back on later on when I go to paint this. But for now, this will let us test fit the retaining ring. Okay, so it goes on the way it should. Looks pretty good there. <clears throat> now, as far as a parachute goes, um, my students and I simulated this in Open Rocket and also in RockSim, and a 36 inch parachute is sufficient for the weight of this rocket, even if you have it set up for dual deployment. It gives us a landing speed of around 20 to 22 kilometers per hour, depending on the motor used. Um, as far as motors go, this will accept anything from a 38 millimeter G up to a K, although a K takes up a lot of the room in the body tube and may make it so that the parachute will not fit. Although if you're doing it dual deployment, the parachute's going to be kind of small in the main body tube. Okay, but certainly a G through a J will fit quite nicely, and no additional nose weight is needed. This rocket is already properly balanced. So our last structural component to go on will be the um, rail buttons. Okay, now I prefer to use rail buttons that have a T-nut in back, and that gives it a flange to pull against. There's not enough room in here to do that on the aft end. Now, if I had weighted on the motor retainer, there might have been just enough room there, but it would be really tight. So, for the aft rail button, I'm going to use a wood screw and penetrate right through this centering ring here. So, it's got something to grab onto is you want one of those uh, rail buttons as far back as you can get. That way it stays attached to your rail for as long as possible before um, the rocket leaves and is picking up velocity. The other rail button will need to go down as far as we can reach basically on the inside of this tube and has to be farther down than the coupler is. So it looks like it's going to be, need to be going down there about four inches or so. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is just pick a side. <coughs> Does okay. So the first thing I need to do is just find the middle point between two of the fins. So the easiest way is just with a flexible tape here. I'm going to offset this by a centimeter. Okay, so that's going to be right at, should be right at 6.1. Okay, so I need about 3 centimeters here. So it's going to be on the 4 line because I'm offsetting 
1. Okay, so that's my starting point. And then I need to draw a line all the way up the rocket. Now to do this, I'm going to use a piece of angle aluminum. Okay, and this can be easier if you have a helper. Unfortunately, I do not at this particular time. The idea here is that this will lay flat in a straight line if both edges of the angle are in contact with the rocket. Now I don't need to make a line all the way up. Well, I need to make a line is down at the aft end, which you can't see me doing. I'm just running out of room here. Okay, and then I'm going to make a line up here. Not going all the way down, but giving me lots of room there to line up with my forward button. Okay, so now I've got a line up there and a smaller line down here. And now I'm going to go get the hardware and the rail buttons themselves. Here are my rail buttons. These are just standard size. And they have a recessed side on one side so that you can use recessed screws like that. Um, but if you need to use other screws, you can flip them over and use like that for a machine screw or like this using a pan head screw. Okay, so I'll use one of these two to do the aft one. And then this is a T-nut and it actually goes up through like that and then you put a screw on top of that. And the same way, depending on whether you have a pan head or a flat head screw, um, you can do this in either way. What we want down here is when this is installed, we want the end of the screw to be flush with the T-nut. So you may need to adjust the type of screw you have depending on how thick this is and how thick this is. Alright, here is my T-nut on the body tube here. and This is on the forward end. Now to get this in, um, you either need really long skinny fingers or you need a little aid. And what I did was just take my ruler, put the T-nut on it, and then put it upright so I could stick it up against there. Now ideally I want to epoxy this in, but first I'll just get the um, button on. So I'm going to put the button over the T-nut. And again, this is might be easier if you have a helper with you. Alright, so now I've got a screw going in. Now it's just whipping around in there because there's nothing locking against it. So what I'm going to do is I'm pulling tension here. There we go. Okay, so now that's firm in there. Now some people like to have this a little bit loose so the um, button actually spins around there. Um, you might get a little less friction that way. The, the delrin in the button is supposed to be pretty low friction to begin with. And it always kind of bothers me if I've got loose things here. All right, down on the aft end, I just drilled an eighth inch hole. And I didn't quite hit the centering ring square on. Okay, but I was able to thread this pan head uh, screw through it. And the main thing I have to watch for here is to make sure I don't go through the motor mount. All right, so on both of these, I'm going to add some five-minute epoxy, which I will mix up right now. Right, for the aft one, I'm just going to take a little bit of epoxy and stick it down the hole here. And a little bit more. You can be pretty generous with it here. Now, especially for one on a wood screw, I'm not even going to attempt to try and make it spin. So I'm just going to put this in. Okay, and just make sure that it is 
perpendicular. Okay, and then I can check down in here. Um, it's actually got pretty good epoxy on it. I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit more right over the screw threads to help lock that in place. Okay, now for the forward one, ideally I would like to be able to put epoxy in between the T-nut and the body tube, but it was just too far down for me to do that. So instead, I'm just going to completely cover it. And here I'm going to need a bigger applicator. It's a little bit longer. And the idea here is to allow this to kind of smooth the button or the uh, T-nut into the rest of the body tube. So I'm just going to put a nice cover over that. I don't know if you can just barely see it down there. Basically, we don't want any sharp edges that are going to catch the parachute or the shock cord. Okay, so we want to let this now set horizontally with the button down and let that epoxy just kind of level itself there and so we'll let this cure for a good 30 minutes and then we'll come back so the rocket is structurally finished at this point and it's also very long so I've got to kind of do this in motion here so our uh, launch button came out really nice there as did the one in the aft all right, the fillets themselves are really nice. They've got a little dust on them at the moment. Uh, and if you do want to uh, add to the fillets, let this fully cure first. We'll go ahead and put our retainer on there. Uh, since this is fiberglass, it's pretty resistant to the elements as it is, so you could launch this rocket naked and translucent, which means you can see everything on the inside when you do it. I am not going to paint this as part of the video. I will do so later. But I hope you had a good time building this rocket. If this is going to be your level one attempt, good luck with that. Have a great launch and a safe recovery. And please stay tuned for more of my videos.